Welcome, today we're here to go over safe lifting and transferring practices. Back injuries are the most common work injuries among healthcare workers. Here are some tips to remember when doing any lifting. You must first understand body mechanics. Body mechanics is the way in which we position our bodies during tasks. Now we're going to show you the effect on your lower back when you lift a 10 pound object improperly. If you bend at the waist or slouch while lifting, it takes much more force to lift the same object. When your shoulders are positioned in front of your pelvis, it puts a tremendous strain on your back. Lifting a 10 pound object improperly puts 100 pounds of pressure on your lower back. With years of improper lifting practices, wear and tear on your back can turn into chronic pain. Now that you've heard about the importance of body mechanics while lifting, we're going to show you the proper way to implement safe lifting techniques in order to keep your back healthy. Proper body mechanics is when your head is aligned over your shoulders and your shoulders are aligned over your pelvis. Please stand and follow along to practice proper stance. Take a balanced stance to feet shoulder width apart. Do not bend at the waist, bend your legs, keeping your back straight. Get as close to the object as you can by bringing it towards you or moving in front of it. Get a secure grip. Lift gradually using your legs, keeping the object close to you. Change directions by pointing your feet and turning your whole body. Please use these tips when doing any lifting. Now that you've learned the proper lifting techniques, these should also be used while transferring residents. Some residents need assistance in transferring from one surface to another. As you assist a resident to transfer, you must keep in mind the safety of the resident and the safety of your back. Here are some tips to remember every time you transfer a resident. Assess the lift. Ask yourself if you can lift and transfer the resident alone. Can the resident bear weight? Is the resident cooperative? How much can the resident assist you in the transfer? Once you determine your ability to safely transfer the resident, continue with the one person transfer or get help. Never try to transfer someone by yourself that you are unsure of. Now you are ready to start the one person lift and transfer. Tell the resident what you are going to do and how you're going to do it. For example, you might say, Marge, it's time for lunch. We're about to assist you to stand. Prepare the environment for the transfer. This might look like clearing obstacles that hinder safe movement, having all the equipment placed and ready, for example, walkers, wheelchairs. Apply the gate belt. Every lift requires a gate belt. Always face the resident being lifted, whether that is in front or on the side of them. Make sure the resident places their hands on the arms of the chair. Move the resident toward you, not away from you, scooting to the edge of their chair. Have them lean their head forward, nose over toes. Holding on to the gate belt with both hands, gradually lift the resident to a standing position. If you must turn, pick up your feet and pivot your whole body in the direction you're going. Keep the resident you are lifting close to your body. Lastly, make sure they are secure with their walker or other assisting device. Remove gate belt after ambulation. Hi, Marge. Hi. It's time for lunch. Are you ready to go? Yes, I am. All right, I'd like to help you with your transfer. All right. You feeling strong enough to transfer? Yes. Okay, I'll give you a hand. Let me grab your walker. We'll move your coffee so I don't knock it over. I'd like to have you scoot to the front of your chair just a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to put your gate belt on. All right. Okay. You want to bend forward and on the count of three we'll stand. One, two, three. There you go. All right, off to lunch. Next, we're gonna talk about a two-person resident transfer. Assess the lift. 
Ask yourself if you can lift and transfer the resident with one or two people. Can you lift without a mechanical device? Can the resident bear weight? How much can the resident assist in the transfer? Once you determine your ability to safely transfer the resident, you can one, continue with the two-person transfer, or two, get a mechanical device. Never try to transfer someone that you are unsure of. Now you are ready to start the two-person transfer. Tell the resident what you are going to do and how you are going to do it. Prepare the environment for the transfer. Clear all the obstacles that may hinder safe movement. Have any and all equipment placed and ready in this scenario. Make sure the wheelchair brakes are on. Apply the gate belt. Remember to always use a gate belt. Position each person in front of the resident, near each of the resident's sides. Both people should be facing the resident being lifted. Move the resident towards you, not away from you, scooting the resident to the edge of the chair with their hands on the arms of the chair. Lift on three. One, two, three. Hold on to the gate belt and gradually lift the resident. Both helpers pivot the resident so their back is to the wheelchair. Do not twist your body. Gradually lower the resident into their wheelchair and remove the gate belt. Hi Marge. Hi. How are you? Well, Hi, it's supper time. Are you ready to go to supper? Well, I'm feeling a little bit weak. Okay, well I was going to help you with the transfer. You want me to get some assistance with your transfer? Might, might be. All right, let me call for Nyla and see if we can get some assistance. Nyla, can I have some assistance in F2 with the transfer, please? Hi. Hi, Nyla. All right, well, let's get some help here. If you can scoot forward. Thank you. We'll put the gate belt on. Let me get your wheelchair ready. You stay right there for me. All right, we're gonna have to scoot forward a little bit. And let's put your hands on the chair. Count of three, one, two, three. And we're just gonna dance over to the chair. There, take your belt off. Off to dinner we go. Finally, I'm going to talk about the camel. Use the camel every time a resident has fallen. After the shift supervisor has assessed the resident for injury and it is determined that it is safe for them to be assisted from the floor, you will need to use the camel. Never attempt to lift a resident who has fallen to the floor and cannot get up by themselves. You must know where the camel is stored at your house. First, make sure you have two people to use the camel to lift the resident that has fallen, one person on each side of the camel at all times. Remove the camel from the carrying bag, unfasten the straps, and unroll it onto the floor next to the resident. Position the camel at the side of the resident so that the resident's head is level with the camel badge on the head of the rest. Place the cordless compressor out of the way. Make sure it is charged by pressing the battery button that is indicated how much life is left. Connect the four hoses from the hand control to the corresponding numbered and colored connectors that are labeled under the camel headrest. There is a plug on each layer. The hoses need to click into place to be fully connected. Connect the white tip toes from the hand control to the compressor. Ensure that the hoses are not kinked or the camel will not inflate. Roll the resident onto the green slide sheet that is found in the camel bag. Using the slide sheet, slide the resident onto the camel. Make sure to remove the green slide sheet before inflating the camel to reduce slip. The resident's head should lie on the camel badge and their body should lie centrally, feet on the floor. To switch the compressor on, press the power button 
the green light will come on and will stay on while power is selected. Press the number one button on the hand control to partially inflate the backrest section until the resident is in a comfortable position. Press the number two button on the hand control to inflate the bottom section until it becomes rigid. Continue to press buttons three and four in sequence until the sections become rigid in exactly the same manner. Press button one to finish inflating the backrest and arrive at a sitting position. Make sure there is an aid on each side of the resident while fully inflated because of fall risk. The resident should now be in a position to stand or transfer. To de-inflate the camel, unplug each hose from their corresponding numbers. Roll the camel back up, place the camel back where you got it, and plug the compressor back in to recharge. Remember to use these lifting and transferring practices, not only for yourself and for your back, but for your resident's safety.